Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum Update Tuesday, September 4th, 11.39 p.m. Mountain Time, 2018. You're looking at the GFS total snowfall through September 15th. And you can see before fall arrives the epic amount of snow dumping in the Northern Hemisphere. Racing south towards the lower 48. And that's tonight's first boom. Gordon makes landfall. Child and mobile home storms. First fatality. Tropical storm Gordon is first alert. There's Red Bear. <laughs> Winds at 70 miles per hour as Gordon made landfall. Pressure at just a meager 1,000 millibars. Moving northwest at 15. Here's some updates from the Gulf. Nothing really to show because it was a dud. Tropical storm Gordon made landfall west of Alabama-Mississippi border late Tuesday night, unleashing powerful winds that has already claimed a life in Florida. Emergency responders in Florida's Escambia County received a call around 840 of a down tree that slammed into a mobile home in Pensacola. EMS crews confirm one pediatric fatality. No others were injured. Typical coastal flooding, but this is a tropical storm. Tropical storm Gordon makes landfall along the central Gulf Coast. Heavy rain and flood continue inland for several days. Check out the map here down below at weather.gov. Click on your county and you can get the updates on local watches and warnings. That's how the Weather Ready Nation works. Here's the GFS model showing heavy snow. In Greenland, up to five feet of snow on the east coast here. Heavy snows in the Arctic and snow moving all the way south into Montana. Some snows in Colorado. We'll be watching it as the week progresses. It is chilly out there. Harsh nighttime frost means further headaches for Aussie farmers. Look at the departures from normal. That's cold. Overnight temps are already plummeting to minus 6C in large regions of southeastern Australia, with many farmers reporting significant stem frost damage. The prolonged winter drought means the end for many grain crops, but for those fortunate enough to have harvest with some yield potential left, harsh frosts are likely to be the finishing blow. Look at that GFS temperature anomaly. We're talking 12 to 16 degrees below normal for 30% of the continent. Whew. That's a continent. Heads up. Whew. Heads up. You get it? <laughs> Typhoon damage closes one of Japan's largest airports indefinitely. Nationwide, seven people were killed and more than 300 injured as typhoon knocked down trees, flooded coastal areas, and damaged buildings. One of Japan's largest airports, Kansai International, was closed indefinitely by damage from the nation's most powerful typhoon in 25 years. Japan's strongest typhoon in 25 years killed six. We're talking about Typhoon Jebe. The numbers are in. Japan has been hit by the strongest typhoon in 25 years, causing at least seven deaths. The death toll keeps rising as we scroll down. 200 injuries. Typhoon Jebby made landfall in western areas, bringing heavy rain and reports of winds up to 107 miles per hour. In Osaka Bay, it swept a tanker into a bridge. In Kyoto, parts of a railway station roof came down. Officials ordered more than a million people in affected areas to evacuate. Crazy. Whew. Look at that. It is. Things are blown down and broken. Jebby's the first typhoon to erase my screen to white since screens were created. I don't even know if that's a picture of, but we went all the way there to Twitter. Seismic update. No quakes of note, but the South Sandwich Islands region is rocking with multiple five magnitudes layering on top of each other. Very rare quake in the Ural Mountains, 5.4. And we have this interesting quake off the shore of Portugal, another rare area. We had a rare quake in Canada, a rare quake in the Urals, a rare quake in Portugal. Rare will it go next? Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, man. 
That that was bad. So there you go. NASA asteroid warning, asteroid bigger than Big Ben headed for Earth next week. An asteroid larger than London's iconic Big Ben clock tower will whiz past the planet at incredible speeds next week, NASA has warned. But before we get to that, let's check out this visual. This is an animation representing the increased count of all known asteroids in the solar system between 1999 and present. And what you're going to quickly glean from this uh, mock-up is that just a few decades ago, we thought that there was this many objects. Now, Earth is the powder blue here, circle, and by 2009, we were growing worried. But now, January 31st, 2018, you can see how many near-Earth objects we are aware of and we're tracking. And it is absolutely insane. Now, as the magnetosphere wanes, what this means to our future is anyone's guess. We're probably totally fluxed. And that's a boom Whew. of asteroidal proportions. Now let's get back to this big chunk. The Space Rock dubbed Asteroid 2018 QU1 is longer than nine double-decker buses in a row, taller than the Westminster Landmark, whatever the, that is. And NASA estimates the asteroid measures somewhere between 246 feet and 557 feet. So it's about 350 feet. According to the U.S. Space Agency, QU1 will make so-called Earth's close approach on Tuesday, September 11th. And terrorists were not involved. Whew. Thank God. Asteroid QU1 will skim past the planet at 4.40 a.m. BST, 3.40 a.m. UTC from a distance of 0 0.028 AUs, which is really close and this video is totally fucking awesome <laughs> let's get to it look at all of these chunks now as our magnetosphere wanes if these chunks decide to psh, make a beeline towards this light blue circle we are totally fluxed look at all those little things those little things are actually big chunks planetesimals left there from past Calamities, cosmic catastrophes, the thunderbolts of the gods, and it is insane. More to come. Did you see uh, about the new imagery for Mount St. Helens? Yeah, new imagery solves the mystery of why Mount St. Helens is out of line with other volcanoes because the batholith and lacolith system caused it to migrate a little westward. So come check it out. If you want to know about the geology, about what's going on, and you've been picking up what we're putting down, you'll easily be able to read these graphs and understand what's happening here. We just don't have time to cover it. But if you want to know more about the grand minima of total solar irradiance leading to the Little Ice Age, and this particular chart that many people talk about, this is coming from Abdusmatov, Haba Bulo, 2012. The beginning of the new little ice age, which is yesterday, not now. It already happened, and you're living it before your very lives. Now, friend of the channel, Habibulo Abdusmatov, back in March 20, 2013, came out with this paper, and we're going to share it with you. So you better bone up. Little ice age, TSI, energy budget, albedo, greenhouse gases, feedback effects, grand solar minimum much. The climate system is affected by a quasi-bicentennial bicentennial cyclic external action connected with corresponding variations of the TSI. That's the total solar irradiance. And these cycles go in and out of phase, and they cause grand minima and grand solar minima, bigger and smaller and tiny and gigantic. And you're here, and you better prepare, because it was once bad and really bad, and we're going into who the knows what Whew. hella bad and Habibulo was calling and blowing the whistle six years ago I was listening many others were now back in 1941 Milton Milankovic wrote the canon of insulation and the ice age problem in 69, it was translated 
from German to English. Yes, and you can get it on eBay for $97 in hardback. There are multiple copies available in Belgrade, Serbia. The Canon of Insulation and the Ice Age Problem. I just bought a copy. You can get yours. You don't have to. Here are the cliff notes. I'm going to leave you the PDF. These are the cliff notes to that book. And Milutin Milankovic was not a very, he wasn't a looker, let's just say. But the information contained within is groundbreaking. And it basically unravels the mathematics of the orbital perturbations of our planet. The great year and what could potentially be driving the ice ages. Now, according to Tyler Durton, there is some upside to global warming. And you're welcome to read about it here from Zero Hedge. We won't get into it. Here's the Maunder Minimum. We won't get into that either, but we'll leave you links. The reign of Louis the Fourteenth appears to have been a time of real anomaly in the behavior of the sun. This is coming from John Jack Eddy, father of the new Eddy, modern Eddy Minimum. Whew. So much terminology, so much to know, so many graphs. It's absolutely insane. Boom. Whew. Oh, we're not done yet. Heads up. Heads up. Heads up. Heads up. Heads up. Heads up. Whew. That guy's got to go. Check it out. I'll leave you this. It comes from 1976, volume 192, number 4240, from Science, the Maunder Minimum. It's just a page, but it's tantalizing. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and share this. Subscribe if you haven't, but most importantly, share it. Without you, we won't grow. The powers that be don't want people to know the information I just blabbed about. It's up to you to get it to the global warming alarmists and the warmists so that maybe we could hear a popping noise and that something will change. And that would be a boom. But in the meantime, you should be preparing to survive and thrive in the future. A future that Habibullo Abdusmatov was calling out in 2012 to be very cold and the beginning of the new little ice age, which starts now and we're here and we're going down here. Whew. That's far down. And it was bad back in the Dalton and we're already there. And in just 10 years, we're gonna be back in the Maunder Minimum. See these pictures? It's not good. It's the end of the empire. It has been time immemorial. On the cusp you're living, the empire crumbles. Now the powers that be don't want you to know that. And even when they find out the empire is crumbling, they pretend that it's not. They hold on to the very last moment. If you're not prepared, when the lights go out, you will be in a bad way. So the time is now to start preparing to survive and thrive in the future. If you don't know about My Patriot Supply, the cheapest place to get your preparedness, food, seeds, water filtration, air purification, and other survival essentials, at the lowest prices, it's right here. You can support our channel, support the work that we're doing here, and support your own survival. It's all on sale. Free shipping in the U.S. and the best prices for any preparedness products on the planet. And that's a boom. Be safe, everyone.